Hello and welcome to part two of my interval video series. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch that one first. I will put a link to that in the description below. I will do a very quick summary of part one, but if you get confused at all, please, please, please go back and watch that part one video first. Also, in the beginning of this video, I'm gonna be rambling about a few topics. So if you wanna cut right to the chase where I show you how to figure out interval qualities, or if you just wanna skip ahead to the next section, I included timestamps in the description below. So you can skip ahead over any section you might find boring. Also, if you find any parts of this video confusing, I will be including links to some other videos that I think you should watch before you watch this one to get familiar with some terminology. So in my part one video, we learned how to name interval numbers properly. If you remember, we said interval names have two parts to them. The interval quality and the interval number. The quality is the adjective that comes before the number, such as major, minor, augmented, diminished, or perfect, and the number is just the number part of the name. So for instance, in the interval name a major third, major is the quality and third is the number. In the interval name a perfect fifth, perfect is the quality and fifth is the number. We also discussed how when it comes to naming interval numbers, you only need to pay attention to the letters in the note names and just count the distance of the letters. For instance, if the interval is C to E ascending, we just count the letters C, D, and E, and that's three. So therefore, the interval is a third. If the interval is B flat to F sharp, we're gonna look at the letters, remember, so we actually ignore the flats and sharps, so we just look at B to F, and we count the letters. B, C, D, E, F, that's five letters. Therefore, the distance between B flat to F sharp is a fifth. There are a bunch of weirder and trickier examples that we go over in that part one video. So seriously, if you haven't watched that one, please go watch it first. But in this part two video, we are going to learn about naming the interval quality. So that's that adjective that comes before the number. And this is really the trickier part of interval names. So I'm gonna do my best to break it down in the easiest way possible. It seems like when most people are taught intervals, they're told to just count the number of half steps or whole steps between the two notes to figure out the interval name. And while this is not an incorrect way to figure out intervals, I personally find it extremely complicated, very difficult to memorize for numerous reasons, and most importantly, I think it's kind of impractical. So I'm gonna teach you how to approach it in a way that is much more practical and easier to understand. Because this is the only way that I can personally even think about interval names and actually get to the correct name for them. If I think about the half steps and whole steps, I end up maybe giving it a wrong name or it just gets confusing for me. But if I think about it this way, it's nice and easy, crystal clear. Now I could show you why counting the number of half steps can get really, really messy and complicated when it comes to interval names, but I don't want this video to be too long. And rather than waste time showing you a method I think is difficult, I'd rather just cut right to the chase and show you what I think is the much better way. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, I really like using half steps and whole steps because I, I can really clearly see the distance of the interval on my instrument when I use whole steps and half steps. And if you're one of those people, then that's great. You should keep thinking about that way if it makes sense to you and you can easily see it on your instrument. And actually thinking about it in whole steps and half steps is beneficial when you're looking at your instrument. So there is a value to that. But even if you can really easily see the interval distances in terms of half steps and whole steps on your instrument, you might not always be referring to the names of the intervals correctly, which is because interval names can be very tricky. But calling things by their correct names is actually a very important part of music theory. It might be okay to not know the correct names of things at first when you're starting out, but as you dive deeper into more advanced topics in music theory, you're gonna get confused and hit a bunch of roadblocks if you're not calling things by their correct names. And this includes intervals. Now, now, the only caveat is that the way I like to think about interval names requires you to know your major scales. However, even if you don't know your major scales yet, don't let that scare you away from this method. Because first off, I think that learning interval names is actually a much more advanced topic than just learning your major scales. So you really should be learning your major scales first. So for example, before you try to figure out the name for the interval between A and another note, you really should know what your A major scale is. So the best order, I think, is to learn a major scale first, and then you can analyze the intervals within the scale. And you can do it in small bites, right? You don't need to memorize every single major scale first to start learning about intervals. You can start with just learning one major scale, let's say C major scale, for example. And then you can learn the names of intervals that start with the note C. Then after that, you can learn your G major scale. And then you can learn the names of intervals that start with the note G. 
and so on and so on. My point is you 100% do not need to have every single major scale memorized to get started on learning about intervals with this method. Just focus on the few scales that you do know, and eventually you can slowly introduce new scales into your vocabulary one at a time. Even if it takes years and years, that's totally normal for it to be a slow and ongoing process. So please don't be scared away from this method just because you don't know your major scales yet. I promise it is by far the easiest way to think about it. And I think it's important to tell you that if you do want to study music theory, you really should eventually know all of your major scales. Because let me tell you, before you actually know your major scales, pretty much everything in music theory seems really, really complicated. And after you learn your major scales, everything seems a hundred times easier, I promise. So even if you're feeling like, oh my goodness, I'm never gonna be able to memorize all my major scales, I totally get it. That's how I used to feel when I was first studying music. I don't know if it's the way my brain works. I'm just really not good at this kind of boring memorization stuff. It's probably because I lacked the discipline to just sit down and memorize it properly. But you know what? Sometimes it's really hard to find the discipline to memorize something that you feel isn't that necessary. But if you're watching this video, I assume you're interested in learning at least some basic parts of music theory. And if you are, one of the very first things you should learn is how to at least be able to figure out the notes in a major scale. Not even have them memorized, but just be able to figure them out. And I think the best way to learn how to do that is using the circle of fourths and fifths. Because if you have your circle of fifths memorized, then you can always draw it out on a piece of paper and figure out the notes in every single major scale. And I made a whole video about how easy it is to memorize the circle of fifths. And in that video, I show you that the only thing you really need to memorize is something called the order of sharps, which is just F, C, G, D, A, E, B. So if you think you can handle just memorizing this very short series of letters, F, C, G, D, A, E, B, then you will be able to figure out all of your major scales, which means you will also be able to figure out every single interval name and so many other things in music theory that require you to figure out those major scales. And as I said, it's totally okay if you don't have them memorized. Remember, as long as you can just figure out the scales without consulting Google, you're on the right path. I put links to two of my videos about the circle fifths in the description below. Phew! Okay, so that was a really long way of me saying, don't be scared of this method even if you don't have your major scales memorized. This is truly the simplest method and you need to learn your major scales eventually anyway. So let's just kill two birds with one stone. So let's talk about interval qualities now. I like to think of interval qualities as having a default setting. So I'm gonna write those out first. So we use the default interval setting in the name whenever the second note is part of the major scale of the first note. Okay, what does that mean exactly? Let me show you. Let's say we want to know the interval name of C to E, okay, so C to E. And on a piano we have C to E. So I'm going to break the process down into steps. So the very first step is we're going to ask ourselves what is the interval number? So what is the interval number between C and E? We know from watching my previous video about interval numbers that the distance is a third, right? Because C, D, E, that's three letters, therefore it's a third. So we know it's a third. I'll just write that here just for fun. Cool. So that brings us to step two. And step two is we're going to look at the first note in the interval. So that would be this C note, okay? And since we're going from C up to E, therefore C is the first note. So we're gonna think about a C major scale, okay? So we think about the major scale of the first note in the interval. So let's just write out a C major scale, and I'll just write it here. We have C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And that brings us to step three. So step three is we're gonna look at the second note in the interval, so that would be this E note, right? Because C is the first note, E is the second note, right? C and then E, so we're gonna look at that note E, and we're gonna ask ourselves, is that note E in the C major scale? And if it is part of that C major scale, then we can just use the default setting for the interval name. So let's first answer the question, is the note E in the C major scale? Well, you tell me. I see it there, right? I see it right there, C, D, E. So since E is part of the C major scale, we can use the default setting for a third. So let's go to our default settings and look up third. Here's third and it says major, right? Therefore, the distance is a major third between C and E. Just as a very quick side note, don't confuse any of this stuff with diatonic chords because a few of you might be saying, hey, wait, I thought the third scale degree always turns into a, a minor diatonic chord, and that's a totally different thing, okay? So all of these steps I'm telling you only apply to when you're figuring out interval names. Got it? 
Now let's just take a look at these default settings really quickly. If you look closely, the only two adjectives that are written up here are major and perfect. So that means that if the second note in our interval is part of the major scale of the first note, so in this case, if E is part of C major scale, then that means the adjective is either gonna be perfect or major. And if you look at this list of default settings, if you remove the octave in unison, they're all major except for the fourth and the fifth. So if you can just try to remember that, that they're all major except for the fourth and the fifth, and then the unison and the octave are also perfect as well. So it's good to even just say them out loud. We have got perfect unison, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and perfect octave. If you're feeling confused or overwhelmed so far, don't worry, I'm gonna show you lots of more examples so it's gonna to start to sink in. Let's say I'm trying to name the ascending interval between C and G, okay? So C up to G right here on the piano. So let's go through our steps again. So first step is we figure out the interval number. So what's the interval number between C and G? Remember we count the letters C, D, E, F, G. It's five letters, therefore it's a fifth. Okay, so I can just write that there for fun. Second step is I'm going to look at the first note in the interval, which is C, right? And I'm gonna think about a C major scale. And I still have that C major scale written up here, so we can just look there. Third step is we look at the second note in the interval name, which is that G, and we ask ourselves, hey, is that G part of that C major scale? And why don't you tell me, do you see a G somewhere in that scale? I certainly do, it's right there. So therefore, we can use the default settings for a fifth. So what's the default setting for a fifth? If you look here, there's the fifth. It says it's perfect. Therefore, the interval distance between C and G is a perfect fifth. Make sense? Let's do another. What about C to B? Okay, so step one, let's figure out the interval number. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, that's seven. Therefore, the interval number is a seventh. We know it's gonna be something seventh. Now, do you remember what the second step is? So we look at the first note in the interval, right? That's that C note. And we think about the C major scale. So we think about whatever major scale that note would be the root of. So here's our C major scale. And then we get to the third step. Do you remember what the third step is? Third step, I look at that B note and I say, hey, is that B anywhere in this C major scale? And why don't you tell me? Do you see that note B anywhere in this C major scale? I do, it's right there. So C, I'm gonna try to cover this up. Um, C, if you can, do you remember what the default setting is for a seventh? Because since that B is in the scale, we can just use the default setting. So try to remember what the default setting is for a seventh. Okay, if you remember, I said they're all major except for the fourth and fifth, which are perfect. And also the unison and the octave are also perfect. So that means, what does that mean the seventh is? That means the seventh is a major. So the interval C to B is a major seventh. Cool. Let's do another one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna slide these default settings off of my screen, or I'm gonna cover them up with my body just so just so you can't see them at the moment. Just because it's good for us to try to memorize these things. Okay, let's do C to D. Okay, so step one, we figure out what is the interval number between C and D. So you tell me C D. It's two, right? So it's a second, so I'm gonna write second. Okay, so step two is we're gonna look at the first note in the interval, which is C, right? C is the first note. And we're gonna think about a C major scale. So here's my C major scale. And then step three is I'm gonna think about that second note in the interval, which is D. And I'm gonna say, hey, is that D anywhere in a C major scale? And why don't you tell me? Is it part of the C major scale? Yes, it is, right? There's our D. So that means we can use the default settings for this interval. So what was the default setting for a second? Do you remember? It's a major, a major second, right? So that means C to D is a major second. Okay, let's do a trickier one now. Okay, so let's figure out the interval distance now from C to F sharp, okay? So what's our first step? Our first step is we need to figure out the interval number. And remember, when we're figuring out an interval number, we ignore any sharps or flats, right? So we're just gonna kind of think of this as C to F. And then we just count the letters. So C, D, E, F, that's four letters. Therefore, the interval number is a fourth, okay? So it's gonna be something fourth, this interval. We know that, we know that much. 
Okay, step two, what is step two? Step two is we think about the major scale of the first known interval, right? So we're gonna think about that C major scale still. So I still got that C major scale up to help us. And third step, I'm going to look at the second note in the interval, right, which is that F sharp. And now this is very important. So now I really do need to pay attention to the sharps and flats, okay? So the only time when I get to ignore the sharps and flats is when I'm figuring out the interval number. So when you're figuring out the number, you just are looking at the letters, not count, not dealing with any sharps or flats. But when you're finding the interval quality, which is what we're doing now, we're trying to figure out that adjective in front, right? Then it's very important to pay attention to the sharps and flats, okay? So I'm gonna look at this second note, F sharp, and I'm gonna ask myself, do I see the note F sharp anywhere in this C major scale? And let's see, what do you think? Do you see an F sharp here at all? I don't, I see an F, but I don't see an F sharp. So that means we're going to have to alter our default settings. And I'm gonna quickly write something out that will help with these alterations. Okay, so I just moved the default settings down here so I'd have more room on the rest of the board, but you can see it's still just the same things, like our perfect, the perfects are unison, octave, fourths, and fifths, and the majors are second, third, sixes, and sevenths. So those are those default settings. Now I drew this chart up here, and this is gonna help us visually see how we alter the default settings, okay? So the interval we were looking at was a C to an F sharp, right? So we had C to F sharp, and we, we knew that we'd have to alter this because the note F sharp wasn't in that C major scale, right? I'll just write out a C major scale again, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. We're gonna think back to what the interval number is again. So what was the interval number distance between C and F sharp? Remember, it's C, D, E, F. Remember, it's a fourth. So we know it's gonna be something fourth. So we're gonna look at that C major scale and we're gonna think, hey, what would be the fourth in that C major scale. And that would be an F, right? Not an F sharp, but an F. So sort of the default interval would be C to F, which is a perfect fourth, right? So C to F is a perfect fourth. And C to F sharp is a something fourth. We know that. Okay, so let's look at the F and the F sharp and think to ourselves, what is different between F and F sharp? So in order to get from an F to an F sharp, what do we need to do? How, how, do, we, how do we turn an F into an F sharp? Well, whenever you sharpen any note, you're raising it a half step, right? So we're getting a half step higher. So that means if we're making this note higher, we're gonna also move the adjective over one space in our chart. So you could almost think of these boxes as each one being a half step apart from each other. So the three on the top, are for intervals that are perfect, such as unisons, octaves, fourths, and fifths. And this little chart on the bottom is for intervals that are major or minor, you know, such as seconds, thirds, sixes, and sevenths. So bear with me. We're gonna find that word perfect, right? This is perfect, perfect fourth. And so that's for our F. And if I move from F to F sharp, I'm moving up a half step. So that means I'm just gonna move up one block and I get to the word augmented. Therefore, C to F sharp is an augmented fourth, okay? So I can write aug, oh no, I'm not, not gonna have much room, but augmented fourth, okay? If you're feeling confused, don't worry, we're gonna do a ton of more examples. Let's do another one that needs to be altered, okay? So let's do C to F flat, okay? So let's go through the steps quickly. So we have the very first step is we just figure out the interval number, right? And what's the interval number? It's a fourth, right? C, D, E, F. Just looking at the letters, we know it's gonna be something fourth. Okay, step two is we're gonna think about the major scale of the first note, which is C. So we're gonna just, let's write out our C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, cool. Third step is we're gonna look at the second note in the interval, which is F flat. We're gonna ask ourselves, hey, is F flat anywhere in this major scale of C? Well, you tell me, is it there? I don't see it. I see an F, but I don't see an F flat, right? So that means we can't just use our default settings. This one's gonna be altered, okay? So we know from the very first step that this interval is a fourth, right? So yeah, we wrote it right there. 
So you to F flat is some kind of fourth. So we're gonna look at that C major scale and we're gonna say, what is the fourth note in a C major scale? Well, it's an F, right? So F is like our default note for the fourth. And if the interval were actually a C to an F, instead of a C to an F flat, it, it would be what kind of a fourth? Well, because the fourth is always perfect. So it would be a perfect fourth. But it's, it's not, it's another kind of fourth because it's an F flat instead of an F, right? So we're gonna ask ourselves, how do we get from the default note to the altered note? Okay, so how do we get from an F to an F flat? Well, when we flatten a note, we just lower it a half step, right? And that means we also lower our adjective by the same distance as well. So where's our default box? It's perfect, right? Because it's a perfect fourth. So we moved one half step to get from F to F flat, and we're just gonna move one box down to get from perfect to diminished. So that means the interval C to F flat is a diminished fourth, okay? Does that make any sense? I hope so. Okay, so what about um, the interval C to A? Okay, so let's go through the steps. Um, what's the first, the interval number of C to A? C, D, E, F, G, A, that's six. So it's a, the interval number is a sixth. So it's some kind of sixth. Now, step two is we're gonna look at the major scale of the first note, right? So we're gonna look at a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And we're gonna ask ourselves, hey, is that second note in the interval in that C major scale somewhere? And why don't you tell me? Do you see it there? I do, right? It's right there. So that means we can use the default settings for this interval, but I'm, I'm gonna cover up the default settings because I wanna see if you can remember it. So a sixth, what is the default interval quality for a sixth. Do you remember? It's a major sixth. So therefore, C to A is a major sixth. Got it? I want us to take a quick second to look at these interval quality names up here and think about what they mean exactly so we can remember them more easily, okay? So let's start with augmented. So to augment something means to make it greater or larger, right? One of the most popular cosmetic surgeries is breast augmentation where Someone makes their breasts larger. So when we're raising that second note in interval by a half step, we're actually making the interval distance um, even larger and bigger. We're augmenting that distance, right? Because see, if you look here on, on the keyboard, the distance from C to F, right? That's, this, is, this is one interval, that's a perfect fourth, right? And then if we go to C to F sharp, that's even further, this is, not as big as that, right? We made it a little bit bigger. So it goes from being a perfect fourth to an augmented fourth, okay? So it's getting bigger. That's why we move from perfect to augmented. Same thing when we're making it smaller. Let's think about that word diminished now, okay? Diminish means to make something smaller or reduce it, right? It's, it's the opposite of augment. So let's look at C to F flat, okay? So this would be C to F flat, because from if I move from F to F flat, if I flatten that note, I'm lo lowering it by a half step, I'm getting half step lower, and you can see that the interval just got smaller. This distance is bigger than this distance. So that's why this is a perfect fourth, but this is a diminished fourth. So perfect fourth, we make it bigger, it turns into an augmented fourth, right? Here's a perfect fourth, we make it smaller, it turns into a diminished fourth. Now let's think about the interval distance between the notes C and A, okay? We did this one earlier in the video. And we determined that from C to A is a major sixth, right? Because that's in the default settings. Like A is part of a C major scale, so we can just call it a major sixth. However, if the interval were instead a C to an A sharp, look, you can see that that distance is further apart than this, right? Here's my C to A. Here's my C to A sharp. That interval distance just got bigger, right? So it goes from being a major, major six, to what does it turn into? Well, we can look here. Here's, find the word major on my little chart. So here's the word major, and if I move it up, it turns into an augmented sixth, right? So C to A is a major sixth. C to A sharp is an augmented sixth. Okay, now this one, pay attention to this one. So what about C to A flat, okay? So as you can see, C to A, this is a bigger distance than C to A flat, right? We just got smaller. But are we gonna call this one uh, a diminished sixth? No, we don't. So check it out. Let's go back to the default setting, which is the C to A, right? And that's called a major sixth. Let's find that word major again. Here's my word major. And if I move it down 
a half step, so I'm just moving that A to the A flat. It goes from major to minor, okay? So we don't just jump right to diminished. See, with perfect, there are only three, three options up here, but with the major and the minor ones, we have four options. So this actually turns into a minor sixth, okay? Instead of a diminished sixth. So we go from C to A is a major sixth, C to A flat is a minor sixth, okay? Now, if we had C to A double flat, okay, which is kind of crazy, but that does exist, from C to A double flat, and A, A double flat, let's see where A double flat is. So here's the note A, we flatten it once, it gets to this note. If we flatten it again, we get to this note, which is also a G, but we can call it A double flat. So C to A double flat, now what would this one be called? Okay, so C to A is a major sixth, right? And we flattened it two times. So let's, so we start at the major and we move it down two spaces. Then it becomes a diminished sixth, okay? So C to A double flat is a diminished sixth, but just C to A flat is a minor sixth. Okay, let's keep going through some more examples because I think repetition is really important to make this sink in. How about C to G sharp, okay? So we're gonna do C to G sharp. So first step, what is the interval number between C to G sharp? So remember, we just look at the letters, C, D, E, F, G, that's five, so the distance is a fifth. So when we know it's gonna be something fifth. All right, step two is we think about the major scale of the first note, which is C, so we're just gonna think about a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Step three is we're gonna look at the second note in the interval, which is G sharp, and we're gonna ask ourselves, hey, is G sharp part of that C major scale? And again, why don't you tell me, do you see a G sharp in that C major scale anywhere? I don't, I see a G, but I don't see a G sharp. So that means this is gonna be an altered one, so we've got two more steps now. So step four, we're gonna think back to that interval number, which is a fifth, and we're just gonna apply that to the C major scale. So we're gonna look and say, what, what is the fifth note in the C major scale? So C, D, E, F, G. It's just a G natural, right? So that means that C to G, we could think about it, C to G is a, it's a fifth, and what kind of fifth is it? What's the default setting for a fifth? It's a perfect, right? So we have C to G is a perfect fifth. And we have a C to G sharp, right? Not a C to G, but a C to G sharp. So we have a something fifth. So we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, how do we get from G to G sharp? Do we raise it a half step or do we lower it a half step? So when we sharpen any note, we raise it by a half step, right? We get a half step higher. So that means I need to also raise this adjective by one step too. So if I find my, the word perfect here in this little chart, here's perfect, and I raise it up to the next box, I get to the word augmented, right? So that means this is an augmented fifth. C to G sharp is an augmented fifth, cool. Okay, what about C to B flat? First step, what's the interval number? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, that's seven, so it's a seventh. It's gonna be something seventh, we know that. Step two is we think about the major scale of the first known interval, which is C, so we're gonna think again about that C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Third step, we're gonna ask ourselves, hey, is B flat part of that C major scale? Well, is it? No, it's not. I don't see B flat anywhere in that scale, do you? I see a B, but not a B flat. So this one is gonna be altered. Now, how much is it altered by? Okay, well, let's think about that interval number again, which is a seventh, right? And we're gonna find the seventh note in that scale, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, which is just a B natural, right? So B natural is like our default seventh note in this in this scale. And what what adjective does the seventh get? What interval quality does the seventh get? It's major, right? So a C to a B, which is sort of which is our default notes, is a major seventh, right? That's the full interval name from C to B. But we have C to B flat. We don't have C to B natural, we have C to B flat. And we know it's something seventh. So and this gets us to our fifth step where we ask ourselves, okay, well, so how do I get from B to B flat? What, ha what happens when I go from B to B flat? Well, whenever I flatten a note, do we 
raise it or lower it by a half step. When we flatten it, we lower it by a half step, right? So that means I'm gonna find this word major on my chart. Here's the word major, and I'm gonna lower it by one step or move it down one box. I move it down one box and I get to the word minor. So that means this is a minor seventh. So C to B flat is a minor seventh, cool? So I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm actually gonna stop right here and not give any more examples. But the next video that I'm gonna make for this interval series, I'm going to spend literally the entire video just drilling us figuring out interval names and going through examples. Tons and tons of examples. And we're gonna also do interval names that don't just start with the note C. Because if you notice in this video, every single one we did started with the note C. So if you're still feeling really confused, please don't worry, just be patient and stay tuned for that part three video because we're really just gonna be drilling different intervals over and over so much that you're just gonna become an interval pro by the end of it. And even after that part three video, there are so many other things to talk about with intervals. So um, there will be even more videos after part three in this interval series. So get excited, because this is a long series, my friends. Now, if you want to drill and practice everything we went over in this video, I have printable PDF worksheets available, which I will link below. And I also have many other music theory worksheets there as well. And in the worksheets that are made specifically for this video, we're also gonna practice reading and figuring out these intervals um, when they're actually written as notes on staff paper. If you're new to my channel and you've watched this video all the way through, please consider subscribing. I post one video a week and I would love to have you around. And if you wanna know exactly when I post the part three video in this interval series, turn on that little bell notification as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. It really helps me out a lot, so I greatly appreciate it. Okay, that's all for now, but see you next week. Stay tuned for part three and have a wonderful rest of your day or night.